Hi, welcome to the Top Off brought to you by Drink and Know Stuff. I'm Brooke Ray. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite and least favorite grape varieties. So I'm excited to talk about Riesling today. Yes, it is one of my favorite varieties, but it's also sometimes one of my least favorite varieties. The thing about Riesling is, it's kind of like the little girl with the curl in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. Hey, you talking about me? Uh, no, not talking about you at all, Isabel. <laughs> anyway, where does the best Riesling come from? Maybe Germany, maybe Alsace, France, I say both. But what I want in my Riesling is minerality and tang. I want it to give me a little bit of a zip and I want to get some sort of a petroleum sort of feel. I know, sounds weird, doesn't it? But this is what I want. I want exotic beauty and complexity and I want a challenge, much like myself, at least the challenge part. So when I'm looking for Riesling, I like to randomly choose Rieslings that are going to be along the lines of what I'm looking for, meaning I'm usually looking for a dry, everyday sort of drinker. Now how do I find a dry wine among German Rieslings? That's not so easy. See often their labels are quite confusing. They don't put on there the sweetness level. It might be dry or it might be some coarse sort of not dry. Luckily for us, this wine that I chose, which is uh, the 2019 Heidemann's Bergweiler Riesling, says dry right on the label. How nice of them. Now, just to help you out just a little bit, if you happen to see the word trocken, <clears throat> Maddie, don't judge my German pronunciation on that, trocken means dry in German, the wine will be on the drier side. Sometimes you can look at the alcohol content. The lower alcohol content wines will be sweeter because all the sugar hasn't been fermented out, and the higher alcohol wines will be less sweet. So, let's talk a little bit about this winery. <laughs> So Heidemann's Bergweiler uh, winery is in the Mosul region in Germany. It is the most famous and most recognized region in Germany, centered around the Mosul River. Um, the sides of the river bank are often very, very steep, and the steepest sites actually get a term, and it's a German term. Again, my friend Maddie, who's a German teacher, don't judge the pronunciation. <laughs> Steilage means steep slopes. They actually came up with a word just for steep slopes for growing grapes, which I love. So the soil is not really soil at all. The top layer is actually mostly Devon slate, which is awesome for encouraging a flavor of minerality in the wine. They hand harvest all their grapes, handle them super carefully, and then they ferment them low and slow, which means, not like barbecue, but it means cold temperature fermentation that takes a long time. No wood treatment, stainless steel treatment. This brings out fresh, floral, crisp, wonderful flavors and keeps the wine young and vibrant. So what does this wine taste like? It tastes exactly like I wanted it to. An exotic beauty with citrusy notes, white lavender, some white flower, some uh, beautiful sort of just a hint of a petroleum sort of thing and enough body and acidity to make it a monster for food pairing meaning you can put it with a lot of different things heck you could have had this with your thanksgiving as well it was a great wine it was very well balanced and remember that's my word right balanced wine is good when it's balanced and this one is and it's under 15 smackers so it's a hell of a deal <laughs> So in conclusion, the Heidmann's Bergweiler 2019 Dry Riesling is a great wine. It's versatile, goes with a lot of different kinds of food, easy to drink on its own as well, has a screw top, that's always fun, and doesn't break the bank. So I definitely recommend this. Now, speaking of new wines and challenging oneself, as a wine professional, I often like to just kind of close my eyes and put my finger down on the map, if you will, when it comes to buying wines and buy something that I have never heard of, don't know anything about other than maybe, obviously I'll know the region or something like that, but I just don't read up on it, don't do anything. So we'll call it our brown bag. And in the brown bag today is something that, well, I don't know, let's see. Ooh, well, I will say this, 
I'm not a huge label person because I know that there are lots of wines with beautiful labels that are trash, honestly. But this wine has a beautiful label. It just happens to be nice art. That's okay. What is this? This is a Ribera del Duero. That means it's from Spain. I know that much. That also means that it's probably Tempranillo, maybe Garnacha, or maybe a mixture. Um, it may or may not say on the back. Oh, it says Vino Tinto, which only means red wine. So it didn't tell us the grapes. Just to let you know, in this area, they don't call Tempranillo Tempranillo. They call it Tinto Fino. A little trivia there. I also see that there is a sticker here on the back that says Cosecha. Um, that's, that's what that says. So what does that mean? That means this is a young wine. It hasn't been aged a long time. Uh, probably didn't see much wood, and if it did, it was probably a mild amount. So this tells me some things. We got Spain, red wine, Ribera de Duero, which is about two hours north of Madrid. Pretty well-known area. So what do we think it tastes like? I don't know. Red wine? Let's open it up and find out. So let's try this wine and see if it's even worth us taking a second look. I like big taste. I cannot lie. All right, the first thing I noticed, besides the beautiful color here, and it definitely has a color of a young wine that doesn't have a lot of oak treatment or aging and all that kind of thing. But the first thing that I notice when getting a good sniff, hang with me over here, it has a very meaty sort of smell. Now, for any of you who may be vegetarians, that may really put you off, but it's a very nice smell when it comes to having a wine that could be very food friendly, especially with very savory dishes or meat centric dishes. And then I get good amount of fruit, a lot of red uh, fruits and some spiciness. Let's taste it and see. I'm just not really sure. We'll have to see. If you want to find out, you'll have to join us next time about whether or not this wine makes the cut. Subscribe, check out the details below. It's good to see you. And remember, while it's good to know stuff, it's better to drink and know stuff. And uh, remember, it's good to drink. <laughs> Maybe I should drink some more. <laughs>